Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, today, you know, last week, last week we went to uh, we went really far towards one end and talking about a little bit of uh, philosophy or philosophical or almost even spiritual side of uh, drawing with force. Uh, today, um, we're going to get really practical. Um, I want to talk more about a couple of tricks to fixing a problem that Martin um, J. Swanley and I see uh, happen often in um, in people's drawings, right? It's like one of the biggest challenges is how do you get structure into forceful drawings? And once you have even structure, like how, how do you keep things alive? There's plenty of um, instructors and schools out there that uh, start from structure. And once you start there, it's really hard to get out. It, it's, it is literally like you're building yourself a box and there's no way out of that box, right? Like it's hard to manipulate it and to change it. So I'm going to go through some steps with you guys today. And then Swenli and Matunjay will um, demo and I might do a little bit of demo later towards the end. We'll see how we do on time um, on how to fix this problem, right? And two very, very simple tricks to do so. Uh, so let's say hello to the bunch, to the gang today. How's it going, Swenli? Yeah, good. Looking forward to structure, of course. Another favorite of mine. Yeah, you industrial designers and structure, <laughs> <laughs> right? Lots of perspective training. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How are you, Merton J? Ah, uh, doing good. You know, pretty excited because it's kind of weird. You know, I was trained this way and like mannequinization for the human body and automatically like force changes it. So, yeah. Pretty excited to teach. <laughs> yeah, that's a great example. That's that's in essence what most um, I think what most students learn is how to get all that structure going, right? And then you're then you you're stuck. I think it's not, you know to get a little metaphorical. It's like the further into structure that you go, it's like the deeper you keep stepping into the quicksand or mud of of the stuckness of structure, right? And we want to learn how to uh, how to break that today. So you know, as you can see over my head over here. Um, we're going to deal with two main tricks to, um, to get out of this. And then we'll demo a lot for you guys today to keep showing you like, look, this is how I could easily get stuck in this situation. And how do I get out of this situation using, um, these, these tactics, right? All right, well, let's get to it. I think today's going to be, um, pretty, um, demo heavy. Uh, so a lot of it will be, um, you, the audience having the opportunity to watch us, um, to watch us draw. Uh, let's just hit the, um. Let's hit the chat before we get started here. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Just signed today for premium. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, yeah, welcome. That's awesome. Uh, sounds like a stream I need. I don't know how to see structure when doing gesture drawings. I don't have any scheme to rely on or fall back on. Okay. Uh, hello to my favorite celebrities. Hey, Kyla. I'm glad you're able to make it, Kyla. Um, all right. So let's get to it. So structure, two main structures that uh, exist out there, the two like really big ones that everything is built upon are the cube and the sphere. Now, the caveat to today's conversation is in order to draw those well, you need to know perspective. And today's lesson's not on perspective, but one thing I, I don't like in the videos that are on YouTube is um, the sort of preconceived notion of you knowing, um, hey, look, that's a box. I can draw a box. And then you try and draw even the box itself. And it's like, I don't understand why my box looks wrong, right? Um, it's because you probably don't know perspective if there's something going on. So I'm freehanding these with an understanding of how to draw perspective in the back of my head. There's a lot more information and a lot more skill and training uh, behind this than you can imagine if you're someone who doesn't know it. If you do know perspective, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So to even draw these well means know the grid, you know, know that that is a three point box on the left hand side. Notice just the subtlety of me saying on the sphere that I put the arc on the top, right? And I came around on the bottom. So what does that mean? You know, it's like, well, if I were to try to create a box out of this, I would have maybe a turning edge here and here. And this box would be, we would be slightly looking up at it, right? 
Why is that? Well, that's because of this shaped ellipse would also, let's say, be down here and let's say up here. So that's how much information is going into even as something as nuanced as the structure of the sphere, because ellipses are built on planes, right? That I'm looking slightly up at that sphere. You know, and this guy, this guy's built in a, a giant three point grid, right? There's vanishing point this way, there's vanishing point this way and this way, and there's another vanishing point down below. So that's one point, two point, three point, right? So all that information is going on in the background invisibly in what looks to be extremely simple. Yeah, anyone can draw a circle and put a little curve in it or draw a box. Yeah, maybe, maybe not, right? There's a lot of information behind here. Now in drawing the body, the body isn't just boxes and spheres. Um, I kind of consider our next, um, family member here, uh, part of the bunch. And I kind of put them off to the side, just to introduce you to the two main ones first. But here, you know, here we have uh, the tube, right? And to me, the tube is kind of in the family with the sphere. It's like another round object, right? It's got round surface. Um, it's got cut off edges, which gives it a little more clarity, but it's roundness pushes us into the sphere. Now we're talking about ellipses. Uh, again, I think it helps a lot to, um, you know, let's bring this guy over and zoom in a little. Um, I think it helps a lot with tubes to understand where a box actually lives in this. So I can put a line through here and again, understand that, here, let me, let me show you guys this real quick. Uh, you know, if I have a plane like so, and I draw center lines or corner to corner through it to find centers, right? But this gives me an ellipse, right? That's gonna look something like this. And that is how therefore the tube gets construed, right? Uh, because I can then pull straights off of that and then I can repeat this ellipse on the other side, right? And all of a sudden I have this little stout uh, tube, right? But so that's how this guy gets built. So when I look at an ellipse, a box goes through my mind. I can kind of say, all right, what's the perspective on this? This is probably something like this because I'm thinking about the kind of plane I need to create this kind of ellipse, you see? So that gives me this turning edge. That gives me a box that looks something like this, right? And if I put cross contour lines on this, they would look something like this, right? And you can see, oh, okay, that's, that's how this tube was actually manufactured. So when, you know, when we're teaching at drawingforest.com or mentoring, or you know, even if you're a premium member and getting feedback, um, I usually start everything off over here. To me, this guy is the grandfather. You know? And then from here, we get into second tier of sort of power of structure, and then finally into third tier. And third tier, these are called, you know, these are all primitives. But to me, all of these guys, including the sphere, the sphere, the tube, you also have um, cones, right? And on top of cones, you also have um, pyramids. All this stuff is built off of the box, right? All this stuff can be put into this box and then structured into it, right? I can go in here and say, okay, I want, I want a cone built in here, for instance, right? And say, well, you know, a cone, let me draw a better ellipse here like this, all right? So there's a cone, right? That comes from understanding the structure of the box. Okay, so enough about perspective. That's a really quick lesson on how uh, primitives are built and all the sort of oddball ones are built off of the, uh, off the cube itself, right? And it's uh, geometry, okay? So that's the kind of stuff you wanna know. If you wanna learn how to Draw structure, you start with perspective. Perspective leads to boxes, boxes lead to primitives, okay? All right. Any questions in the chat about any of that? That's a lot. I just gave you like, you know, six weeks of drawing lesson in five minutes. <laughs> um, no questions, okay, good. So, so the, what's the problem with these? The problem with these are they're rigid. They have no force, right? It's so going back to a box, right? Here's a box that I have. I'll draw that same box again. Again, I'm thinking about the grid when I draw this, 
Okay, I'm like, okay, I want this pushing down. I can tweak it if I want and squeeze it in a little bit to emphasize that there's a point below, right? So I can I can push that. I can push that with these views as well, these angles. Okay. All right. So here's our box. It doesn't have a lot of movement to it. Now, last week we talked about you know, it's force and other things besides uh, human beings. Sure, it is. Like, is there force in this? Yeah, there is force because straight lines also have energy. This is a very rigid kind of energy, right? It's it's a it's a cube, right? It's a box, so it's a very stiff kind of energy. What we're trying to do is create some arc of motion into the box. So our first step, step number one, our first trick is to add um, to add curve different kind of force. Why curves? Well, a curve um, helps connect. Curve connects to another curve. So when you're drawing, you know, rhythm, right? Rhythm basically is a curve built, you know, connecting to another curve. It's very different than if I say, well, I want a straight like this, and then I want to connect to another curve. Not like this is in its own relationship, it is, but if I can get a curve in here, the connection is more rhythmic, is more fluid. And that's what we're trying to do with this box. So um, a term that we talked about years ago uh, at the very beginning of um, our live uh, Force Fridays was um, line of action. In a sense, like I want a line of action in here. Right now there's no action, right? So let's do that. So let's pick a, let's pick an arc, right? Let's just say that I wanna drive this, whoops. I wanna drive this through here, right? Like this. So that would be my first step. First step to, um, and I'll do this with the other primitives, but let's say with this box is, can I curve this box and still keep a, an understanding of the perspective, right? So now I do this with the box. I'm going to keep the top pretty much the way it is. It's the verticals I'm going to bend. All right, so I'm going to bend this now. I'm going to bend this. I'm going to bend this, right, and give it a bottom. Okay, that's better, right? Number two is better than number one. Less stiff. It's bent, right? So it's got, it's got a curved arc driving through it. It's almost like I melted it or I drove a pole through it and then I bent the pole and the box just has to follow, right? So you see, so that works like that. Let's move this guy off really quick. So the other one was a sphere. My God, it's actually a decent, well, now I started losing it. I'm on a tablet because I'm traveling and I'm, when I'm on the tablet, I feel like I'm drawing with my other hand. Um, so here's a sphere and it's like, well, what do we, what can we do with the sphere? Well, we can try to bend the sphere. I can try to just do this to it. It's almost like, uh, what are those characters called? The little yellow guys from Despicable Me, All right? Looks like one of them. It's like a pill, like a bent pill that I just created. And that, that sort of, as you can see, starts leading us to the idea of the tube, right? So here we had a tube, like so. And if I want to add some energy to that, I can bend this as well. I got a little darker here. And I can just bend the tube, right? So the first trick, again, is to shove an arc through a primitive, right? That in itself will give it some energy, right? Will give it some energy. I feel like I can take this tube here, for instance, and try and connect it, let's say, to another tube. Kind of rubbery. You'll notice, right? Very rubbery. It almost looks like uh, like noodles or something, right? But it feels like I can flow through this a little bit, right? I'm starting to create a rhythm. Same thing with the box. 
Right, if I have that bent box. And I did another bent box. I would have two forms meeting up in noodle land, right? And things can at least start creating a little bit more rhythm to them, right? That doesn't happen if I, you know, let's move this to the right again. It's not gonna happen if I say, well, I want rhythm and I draw, you know, I draw a box and I draw another box. Even if I change the angles and stuff like I did on the other ones, right? Right, rhythm, R for rhythm, and R for no rhythm, <laughs> right? This to this, I got these two strong angles that show up, but I don't have this flow that's happening. And that flow is what actually starts creating rhythm in, um, in our figure drawings, right? How are we doing in the chat before I move on to the next chunk of work here? We called three point now and drew a nice cube, good. Uh, any good book for learning perspective? I would say the first force drawing book um, has a lot of perspective in it. I haven't looked at Marcus Mateau's uh, perspective drawing, but he's such an excellent draftsman. I can't imagine it being bad. I don't know if Swami or Matunjay have the book, but I'm sure it's gotta be good. Uh, Kyla said, I really like drawing perspective, how to see it and how to apply it by Matthew Bram. Yeah, I don't know that book. Um, yeah, so Marcos, like I said, uh, he's just such a damn good artist that I can't imagine the book being bad. Um, okay, so here we are. What we've done is we've gone through the first trick, right? And the first trick is I'm going to take, let's go back here. I'm going to take a primitive and I'm going to add a curve to it, okay? So I'm promising you two quick tricks today. This is number one, add a curve. Get rid of those straight lines. Lines, so you create a bend in that primitive. It doesn't matter what kind of form it is, okay? That's number one. Number two, right? Number two. Okay, so I've got this primitive and I bent it. So that's great. I have some movement going through it. But you'll notice the silhouette of the form is not great. Why is it not great? Well, it's not great because what I did with all, with all of these is I kept the edges of the contour parallel, parallel to one another, right? That means they're equidistant starting at the top, going through the middle and going at the bottom, right? This distance doesn't change here, here, or here. That's not great because it creates a sort of rubbery, um, I'm gonna write rubber-like uh, feel. Things are weak. Rubber is spelled wrong, two Bs. Um, things are weak, which leads us to force shape, right? So trick number two is force shape. So first trick, we took a structure, a primitive, and we bent it. But number two is a force shape. So you have to be aware of what the silhouette is, right? In this case, the silhouette's not that good. All right. So let's uh, let's go over here. I'm going to white this out. How do I improve that? Let's take this blue box. I got my structure that already really starts setting up the rigidity of it, and I want force to go this way. So force is usually a concave curve, right? Pushing outward. So if I wanna play with the shape here, instead of this um, similarity from top to bottom and being equidistant, I'm gonna pinch this down, which means I wanna make this smaller. And a quick way actually of making it smaller is you're almost dealing with creating uh, almost a triangle-like silhouette. So here's the triangle I'm talking about, you see? It's almost like a, like a tooth, right? So I'm starting to create almost this triangular like shape, right? And then I can finish it off down here with structure, right? So here's my perspective and I got my turning edge here. It's like this. 
So here, now I have a, a form that is bent. And this, is, this line over here on the left is force, is really um, clarifying, exemplifying the idea of the force. And this is my straight side, again, which to be very simple, gives me these somewhat triangular, you know, talon or tooth-like shapes, right? So now if I fill this in, right, you can see I have a good silhouette. See, so to go back, add a curve, right? And out of that, double check your silhouette. That curve that you added before to really bend the form, in the end, ends up showing up on the contour, you know, on one of the sides. You'll notice, like, the left screen left side here already had uh, the curve in it. So I just kept that, right? Here's the curve that I had. It's this side, it can't be curved as well. If I do that, I end up with like a, like I said, a rubbery um, primitive, right? It's the straight that allowed this to stiffen up. And by putting that in there, it pushes me into this uh, force-like triangle, you see? And then I can put that turning edge into that shape, which still lets me describe the structure of it and I'm done, right? And then this could be anything. This could be um, a leg, right? I could say, well, the kneecap is down here. Uh, this is the front of the leg. This is the side of the leg. I have a good, um, I have a good force going down there. I could say, here's the box for the knee. I'm going to put the straight now on this side, the curve on the inside of the knee. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Brush. Move this up, and then I can go into the calf. So after I have the knee drawn here, I can then go to the other side again, right? Because this force goes this way towards us on the outside, then we're gonna point this away from us to the other side again. And then I have the, nut, the next um, form and shape. See, I'm gonna start this off simple without the gastronomius muscle, but you can see I'm continuing the form and I'm moving down the leg. It's in perspective, it's really solid. And yet we have rhythm, right? And we have good shape. So actually all three of those, the big topics that we teach are starting to come together here without me getting into the anatomy, right? So any questions before we move forward, we're gonna have uh, Mutunje and Swenli do some uh, demoing. Uh, let's see, if you're gonna curve the shorter lines on top, is there a better direction to curve? If you're gonna curve the lines on top, let's take a look. So if I were to curve the lines on the top surface, um, is there a better or worse way? It's a good question. I think normally when I'm drawing boxes, I actually try to make most of these curves go outward. So I push them out like this, all the way around. And that's because to me, the body is under pressure. It's almost it's like a slightly inflated balloon, you know? Like we're mostly water, so our body usually has convex curves, not concave. They don't usually dip in very much. Um, so I would probably push these out. If I said there was any reasoning behind this top, I would push outward on all sides. And it's totally fine. I don't need forceful shape there because I have it in the silhouette of the length of the limb, you know, not in the cross section. On the site, I talk lots of times about this cross sectioning as like a, like a loaf of bread, right? Like these are, these cross contour lines I'm creating right now create slices on the bread and you'll notice that they have to match up with the perspective of this top line right here and with the bottom line, right? So this is like one loaf of bread. I can cut any slices. I can't do this, right? That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't connect between the two. I can't do that. It has to be parallel, right? Or at least grade eight, you know, slowly between what the top line and the bottom line are, right? And then I, and then I have to have the ability to turn the corner well right? and keep, you know, now I'm lining up with this and this, right? Again, all about the grid, you know, to understand perspective and then taking that understanding and moving it over to, um, to drawing boxes out of your head with the grid more invisible, okay? All right, uh, which one are you guys going first today? I am. Okay, yeah. let me make you co-host here and take care of Mutunje right away as well. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop share, it's all yours. Yes, thank you. In the meantime, I see Don is asking, is the straight bent a little bit or can it be? 
Yes, I would say a straight can go slightly concave. The trick is, you know, when you have these two lines and I have a bend, I don't want to get to the same amount of bend as the force side because that's when I get into rubber mode, right? So you can you can go concave a little bit. And I typically actually do allow the force curve to kind of pull in the straight a little bit. So it's this bent triangle, right? So yes, yeah, good question. Very good question. All right, so to demonstrate what Mike uh, so wonderfully explained, I thought it going to start with a simple post. And again, one thing when you're picking reference, make sure that the reference matches the, uh, the exercise that you're doing. You now for this one, we want to demonstrate uh, like how to add force to the forms. So I picked a reference that notice here, I can see a clear uh, box form for uh for a torso you know if you notice that say this is the torso shape which is a c curve by the way you can see this is stretching and we have compression here but notice that this has a very clear corner you know so already i can see okay so this is the turning edge you know and your clothing kind of helps with that because i can see like how do you find that right I can see, okay, if your clothing is wrapping around, where do I go from the front and start going to the side? And I can see it's right here where I place the corner. Same here. Of course, the torso is round, so it's not going to be like super perfect, but you can see around here, you start to go from the front and like your top here is going to the side. You know, so again, always choose a reference that makes the exercise easier. You know, don't pick a reference that's completely flat and barely has any form. It's not going to help you do this exercise. All right, so let's do a quick drawing of this. So we already saw the form in the torso and this is a C curve. So she's, she's pushing out. Now, kind of slightly leaning back, like this is fairly straight and then there's the leaning back here, it's an angle to the upper torso. Uh, so we go around. Let's push it back slightly. Okay, so this is a simple torso mass to start with. Uh, you can also see the, the natural center. And when placing the center, you want to pay attention to how far away is that center from the farther edge, you know, because depending on when I place it, it communicates something different regarding the rotation of the torso. You know, if I place a center line here, it means that we're seeing mostly the front plane. So I look at this distance, so it's about here for the center line has to, it's on the surface of the form. So it has to do exactly what the form as a whole is doing. And then we saw that the turning edge is around here, the corner of the form. Right, so proportion wise, one good guideline to keep in mind is that the rib cage is around half the length of the torso. You know, so if I have this torso mass, I can see, and you can see it here, that the rib cage, like notice where the bottom of the ribs is pointing out, you know, you can, you can take this volume and kind of duplicate it here. And it's about the same. So I can use a quick wrapping line there. And again, our clothing is helping us because it's giving us a natural wrapping line. So notice that our top is wrapping this way because she's leaning back slightly. Also, I can say, okay, I can use a quick wrapping for the bottom of the ribs. And I want to find like this, uh, the belt line, which is exactly where the clothing is wrapping around again. So I can wrap around like this. Okay, so this gives us a good start. Uh, and you can take these corners and create this V shape here for the crotch. Now, and with female, the pelvis is usually a bit wider, you know, so it's not like a 
like a box like this, usually the box gets wider towards the bottom. So you need to take that into account. You know, this gets wider and keep in mind that the same happens on the other side because it's a symmetrical form. Now, oftentimes I see students forgetting this side. So this gets wider as well. Now, so our pelvis is slightly tilted. Again, notice what the floating is showing us. Now, so this box is like this. And then for the thighs, keep in mind that the thighs have their sockets here on the, on the pelvis, you know. I use the analogy of, uh, I like superhero underpants. So you want to be aware of this socket right here. And if you look closely, you can see it. You can see how the thigh is like wrapping around, especially if the thigh is lifted. You now, usually it becomes even clearer. But keep in mind the socket, it's super important to uh, fit in the thigh. And also it makes it easy because let's say that if the figure lifts her knee to about this position, then you know that the thigh shape is going to fit in that socket, you know, so you can you can move this around in any position. You know, this socket is always a fixed attachment point. All right, so we have the torso, we have structure. Now we can go to the legs. Let me move this just a little bit to make sure we have enough room. So we want to go for the forces, of course, and make sure she's balanced. So you see the thighs pulling out. And she's fairly muscular, you know, so I can see. I'm going to treat the thighs as these tapered cylinders that Mike talked about earlier. You know, so this is outside, inside, uh, outside. You now outside thigh, inside knee, and then outside calf. Like this, this is the ankle. Now, and I could add like the knee joint has like its own little four cylinder going here. You now, so the thigh is, uh, is pushing out that way, like Mike showed, and the knee is pushing slightly in, and then this is pushing out again, creating this rhythm. You now, so instead of just creating rhythm with just line, I'm creating the rhythm with the form. So this is outside calf, then that brings us to the, to the heel. Of course, the heel is squashed because of all the weight she's putting on it. And the same goes, the same thing that we did here, we do for the foot as well. So we have the heel, then we have this, uh, like this arc for the foot, which is another band cylinder. And then we have another little cylinder here for the toes. Now, this gives us a good, uh, basis to begin with and the other leg also seems like it's outside inside outside hey swanley yeah for this leg can you um can you draw the leg as just a tube that's really stiff right two tubes the upper leg and the lower leg uh, uh, sure. and, and the knee you know and then take that tube and then just bend the tube and then after the bending the tube then add the shape design to it almost like what i taught and let's see how what it looks like stiff you know and then bent but parallel and then shaped well you know uh yeah sure Can yeah that'd that. be great thank you let's see so actually no let's pull the opacity down and let me grab another color here so let's say that you know we do what a lot of drawing methods out there teach, which is to draw a tube that is completely uh, straight and parallel. You know, so it would be perhaps something like this. Now, usually they use uh, a sphere for the knee, and then you have another like, straight cylinder here. To make sure I don't taper it because that kind of goes automatically. Now, so we have cylinder, we have sphere, we have another cylinder, and let's say for the leg, 
let's give it another like primitive shape as well. So we're gonna hide this for a bit so we can see that. Okay, and then this leg would be the same. And I'm automatically tapering that cylinder, so I have to make sure to keep this parallel. So let's see, this leg, of course, is going down and away from us. We have a sphere for the knee joint, and then we have another cylinder. It would be the ankle, and this would be the closest foot. Uh, checking the placements, make sure that she's standing in perspective. Okay, so this would be the legs. Uh, here's the socket where they fit into the pelvis. So this would be the legs as you would see a lot of instructors out there teach you and it's good for form but notice that it's if you look at the reference you know the leg is much more fluid you know it's not like the human body isn't made of stiff geometric forms you know so this is number one so let's see what happens if we if we just bend this leg. Let's see if I can draw it on top so we can keep seeing the comparisons. Okay, let's reduce this a little bit. And change the color as well. So let's see if we can bend this just a bit, but still keeping it like parallel and robbery. Now if this, then we would have the knee. So this will be the knee joint. Okay, then we'd have the foot here. Maybe add just a little arcing to it. Just for the fits into the pelvis. All right, so notice that even at this stage, it's starting to get better. Notice that it's starting to feel more like a real leg. It's more dynamic and fluid, you know? And all we did is just add a bit of an arc to those tubes. You know? And then we go back to what I was doing at first, which is to bend them and also taper them a little bit so that the... Uh, the outside of those, uh, the silhouette of those tubes become a four shape, you know, which makes it even more fluid and dynamic. Let's see, so this would be like the knee joint right here. So outsides, inside and outside. And notice if you look at the lower leg, especially here, it's pretty clear. There is a clear arcing to the leg, you know, it's not, and if I add, if I want to add like a straight tube here, it's going to take out all the energy and notice that the silhouette of the leg doesn't match that, you know, because the human body again is much more fluid and dynamic than that. Check relation of the ankle, and the ankle would be here. You know, so this would be outside and then here we would need like this wrench shape that the ankle bones create and this is like holding that foot in place see 
this will be right here. So again, what it did here, it just added a bit of tapering to the cylinder, you know, so that the silhouette of that form is a four shape, you know. This is also curved, but not as curved as the uh, foresight of the form. Then I did the same with the knee, you know, the knee joint, and then I did the same with the, with the lower leg as well. So this gives you a bit more dynamism and it's the closest match to what the, what the figure is really doing. Uh, let's see. So she's standing. She is well balanced. Uh, let me make it just a bit smaller so we can fit the rest. Okay, so I have the torso, we have the legs. It's all well structured. You know, so next, one thing that I see students struggle with, keep in mind that the neck is not a flat shape. Now, if you look at the, the top plane of the torso and say it's the center, uh, if you look at the top plane, you can see that there is a socket. You know, the neck is a tapered cylinder. It's like this. You know, so you need to keep in mind that there's a socket here. Now I'm drawing through because of course we are looking up at this box. So in this case, she's, she's bending, uh, bring her chin towards the pit of the neck. So the next cylinder would be bending like this. Now, so the neck would be around here. I to keep making this smaller to fit the whole thing on the page. Now, so you have this next cylinder here. And then you have the, the head sitting on top of that. So all of these are volumes. You know, they're following the force arc. You now, this is the direction of force of the whole thing. But keep in mind that this all has volume to it. No, it's not flat. And the neck muscles sit on top of that cylinder. You know, they attach behind the ear and this triangle be here and we'll see a little bit of it here and if you look at the reference you can see it you now what if you put your hands around your neck you'll feel that this is all round and cylindrical all right last but not least we can add in the arms so this is going up with the shoulder right here so same as with the legs now you have the force arc of the arm, and I'm thinking already about those cylinders. Also, just like we have the knee joint, we also have the elbow joint. You know, so we have a cylinder, four cylinder for the upper arm. The elbow is usually a bit more like squared. You know, we can see like a clear, clear angle. You see where the arm is facing in 3D space. And then connected to that, you have another tapered cylinder, you know, for the, for the forearm. Now, so same, the same concept can apply to the whole body. Now, this would be the turning edge of the arm. And to see which direction the arm is facing, I keep track of the biceps and the triceps because the, the biceps muscle is here on the front plane and the triceps is on the back. So I usually just look for where's the biceps muscle or where's the triceps. You know, in this case, the biceps are facing up. So I know that this is the, like the front plane. This is the sides. And you see that the edge of the triceps here at the back. You know, so very uh, fast way of keeping track of that. All right, I'm going to pass down to Mitunje, seeing the time. Uh, hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, let me stop the share. All right. Thank you, Sven Lee. That was awesome, <laughs> as always. Awesome. Uh, all right, guys. So let's uh, get down to demo as quickly as I can. So before starting, uh, 
this is the way I would start, <laughs> you know, in my uh, college time. So you're used to, uh, you're used to teach like these volumes, like cups, you know, and something like that. And yeah, it doesn't work, right? Quite boring. Um, it doesn't have energy. Yeah, you can, you can say like, oh, these are volumes like coming out and this is, okay, you can say that this is like is going back there. Uh, yeah, but quite boring, right? Doesn't have that energy. And uh, so yeah, I, I teach basics a lot. And uh, when a student is moving into form, the first thing that I see is like, um, obviously the line quality and everything, but you know, when they're in the form, the challenge that they face is, well, combining like both of these, right? The, the basics and the form itself. And you have to remember that the force is, force should be the glue to all of that, okay? So before all of that, right? Before all the shape thing and before all the structures, remember that you, you need to use the force, right? Uh, so I know the I, I'm about to like do the boxes and stuff, you know, but even for that, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna draw that energy first, right? It's something like that. And see like it's bending, like he's bending right there. Now I'm gonna say, okay, uh, instead of just uh, drawing the forces, I'm just gonna put a lot of structure in there, you know, to so see, uh, I'm going for the function first, okay? And then I say, okay, here's the box, okay? Here's a box of it. So that completes my first necessity of um, like injecting, you know, those primitives with the force, okay? Because I use it, okay? Use it and okay, it will be done. Don't. Uh, don't say that, okay, I'm not getting dynamic figures. I'm not getting fluid figures when I'm using, uh, when I'm using these primitives because you're not using it at the first thing, okay? Now see what's happening, obviously, uh, the rib cage, okay? The rib cage uh, is a solid bone, okay? It doesn't bend. So don't try to do that <laughs> with the rib cage, you know? Don't try to do that. Uh, the rib cage and the pelvis, they are the, uh, they are the bone, okay? Uh, like that. So most, uh, not most, but all of the bending, the twisting are the function that we see, the stretching and squashing that happens within the torso, you know, like the core, at the core of the torso right there. And this is all solid, okay? Both of these are solid. So see what's happening, like the rib cage is like poking out, you can see in there, okay? I'm just gonna put a box in there and say, okay, I, I got this energy and all of this extra mass is um, all the muscles, you know, that's added on top of these boxes. So, yeah, let's try to do it like very, very quickly. I'm just gonna, whoops, I just draw it on photograph, no worries. Right there. All right, shrink it down, there we go. All right, so that's the box, right? Now another box is the pelvic, the pelvic box right there. <laughs> Call it the pelvic box <laughs> for some reason. All right, that skin is stretching right there. You see that box in there? All right, that's all the squash that's happening. Uh, all right, that's the box right there. Hmm. I'm just thinking if I can just draw another, it's not that clear. You know? uh, let's see, something like that. I'm still using the force, right? Is the, the rib cage box and there's a squash that's happening. <clears throat> and that's the pellet box in there. Okay? Now I'm using a center line obviously to uh, track like where the center is. As you can see, the center line runs down right from there. You can see the belly button in there, right? Um, my pelvic box in there. Okay, so now, yeah, so you see, uh, I'm using force, you know, to glue all of that, to glue all the boxes and primitives and it looks fluid. Now, the legs, obviously, for sure, okay? Again, figure out the function first, uh, which means, again, use the force as glue and say, okay, what the leg is doing. Okay, obviously it's coming forward, but what it is doing, is it uh, the bending, it's stretching, like what's happening? So you can see with both the legs, uh, both the legs are doing different functions. This one is bending, right? I'm gonna say, okay. And here's again, the cylinder. I'm using the cylinder, uh, which I showed you in the previous drawing, uh, right there, okay? That one, that dead cylinder. But I'm just putting uh, that triangle shape in there, like the four shape in there. And I'm just tapering it down, okay, to this point. So it's just that taper down that I'm using here, okay? Right there. Now, <clears throat> that's the end of the cylinder. Uh, and this leg is e now going back, okay? So you can see if I put down like those cross-control lines <coughs> forward, 
and this is going back like this okay so again just taking one more cylinder tripping tapering it down okay now see what's happening like it's such magical thing about tapering down and just making a primitive into four shape that it almost looks like that leg you know it's like see that's just a normal cylinder but it looks like the leg offset right so take those dead uh, primitives and just um, put four shape in there <laughs> okay and just bend it and see how you how you got that energy right uh the stretch leg by the way is it again the same thing right i just tapered down cylinder again and once more and there we go you know <laughs> that's a stretch leg uh okay so with the foot and everything it's kind of same it's just uh this i'm just using a simple shape for the feet okay for all yeah and there we go now we can just do the arms right the head just like swenly did uh, i'm not gonna do that uh, straight arm there okay. and that's your head now again you know you need to see that structure in there see right there um yep yeah, that's a structure you see this upper plane of the box, uh, this head obviously, and you see the side and you see the front, you know, if you call it the front of the face. <laughs> so that would be your front, that would be a top, that would be a side, right? So that's the perspective of this head in there. Okay? Uh, so let's do another quick one. Mm -hmm. um, so here's one more. Uh, and I did that dead drawing again. See that volumes isn't working, you know? And uh, I was getting this, I was getting like these uh, volumes in there quite dead it's like oh look at this uh, oval you know kind of shape which has like no volume and uh, like base to it basically okay we will try to make this uh, more lively by just these techniques you know that we've learned today uh so let's see uh, what she's doing right she's pushing out the chest uh we're trying to get this and this and in, in the box you know and I know uh, if you were just to about like you do a force drawing on this one, then I would really push this out. But these are again, like the muscles on top of the boxes. Okay. We cannot go for that, um, like full structure, uh, full contour thing, you know, if you are just doing these boxes and thing, but I'm just considering that, you know, for right now. So let's again, do the box right there is my box. Very, very simple. Uh, whoops. Again, doing this using the center line to track things out. Okay, right there. Uh, now what's happening? Uh, this leg is coming out, okay? Which means I have this pelvis leg down there and uh, I've got this like connection out from here. Okay, just like Sunday did. And okay, I need this force from here. That would make this a curved side, right? Because this is pushing out and this would be my straight side of it. Okay, again, that cylinder thing. Uh, make it even smaller and then just doing this again tapering this down <laughs> and i know because it looks so natural because when i'm tapering it down i'm tapering it down to a point where you know it just like fits that feet in there you know so it looks like lead you know all of a sudden it just looks like lead so magical by this one um and now the stretch leg is just that i'm drawing through it to tell you guys and then doing this see again the tapering down helps a lot so I can do the feet again. Oops, that's the that's a ruler. Yeah, just the feet again. Uh, with this feet again. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of messes up with the contour a little bit. As you can see, the negative space here is a lot. But who okay. cares? <laughs> uh, yeah. So now what's happening? You no. Know? So this this is the tube coming out. Right. I'm just uh, basically doing one rhythm in like this and just like putting uh, a straight on the one side of it. And I'm doing it for the whole arm, but I'm also aware of like where the joint is. Okay, so I can put a um, a bend, uh, like a rubber band in it to make a difference. And there we go, you know, so I can do this for hand as well, if I want. Hmm. Now the hand is, hand is there. Is doing right there. You can do it for fingers as well, you know, if you have time and you know, if you want to do it for separate fingers. And then I would add the neck. Yeah, right in there. Again, <clears throat> this is just uh, I'm doing, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I'm doing the head like this, head like that, and just like a, a simple shape. I'm taking it 
And now I'm saying, okay, here's the turning edge, here's the top of the box, uh, which is the face, obviously, and that's the side of the box, right? It's like that. Side of the box, the top of the box, and uh, the front of the box, okay? Like that. Might be too big. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, something like that, see? And the other hand is just, again, going back, you know, so something like that. Uh, and well, that's it, you know? So <laughs> just two tricks. Just uh, use the primitives and bend them, you know, like rubber. And don't think, them F as, uh, don't think of them as wood, okay? Think of them as rubber. Uh, and just taper them down, you know, try to put like the straight to curve design in them and you will end up with primitives with lot four. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Mike to conclude the stream. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Swanli and Matunjay. Uh, so good job. You know, what I want, hopefully what you guys in the audience have noticed today is uh, you know, to, to tweak your way out of um, structure. If you're, if you're being instructed by an instructor that is giving you lots of structure, um, you wanna to try to bend those structures, right? Make sure instead of having a stiff box or tube that just adding a little bit of bend to that is already gonna give you a lot more drama. And because those curves are what actually end up, you know, connecting better into one another instead of just straight lines, right? We want stuff to arc. You can see there's, it's almost a better marriage to do this than just to do this, right? So you wanna to try to have this kind of thing happen in your drawing. You don't want this, right? Where things are bent the exact same way. What you're looking for is that curve versus straight, right? Something that looks like that. So bend it and then be aware of its silhouette, right? And silhouette is again, created by the form of the object itself. We started with a structure today. We gave it a little punch, right? Gave it some arc into one side and then pay attention to that silhouette, which is coming from the form. Make sure you're getting a little bit more straight to curve shape design. Keep in mind the idea of the triangle. When it comes to limbs, arms, and legs, the, tri the triangle's driving basically that whole concept from, from, you know, from where it connects to the body um, out to, uh, as Mertunjay was talking about, hands and feet and so on, right? So you can get down, it's all the way to the nitty gritty uh, with design to have more fluidity, right? If we have a couple of minutes left, maybe what I'll do here is take a shot at drawing some figures from imagination uh, with some of these concepts. Hey, Kid India, thanks for the um, uh, that ch super chat. <laughs> That's what it's called. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. I just saw that, Kid India. Thank you so much, guys. That's great. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I love it. Great sticker. Um, so let's try drawing from imagination. Um, just arms and legs alone with what we showed you today, right? Like arms are so darn complicated, right? But just having um, a very simple uh, curved idea to a straight idea, right? Let's say it's like, well, what is that, Mike? I don't understand, right? Because it looks like just a very simple shape. Here I have my straight, here I have my curve. Um, but I can add anatomy to this, you know, like this. This could easily move from here into, let's say, a, um, into a hand shape. And I could start adding an anatomy to this. I can, you know, take this and push um, a bicep into this. I can take a brachioradialis muscle and punch this curve out, right? So here's the bicep. I can push the tricep out a little bit and straighten out at the, um, at the elbow. But underneath all of this is this concept of a buried shape now with all this form in it, right? So the, the way, the progression of this, I could see being, um, being in a class and being asked to draw a tube or a box would be, you know, hey, draw the arm. It's a tube, right? Okay, what if I bend the tube? That gives me a little bit more, a little bit more flow, right? A little bit more of something. Now, again, the problem with just bending it is, it's kind of rubbery. So as you saw me do at the end, just to go back here to the beginning and bring it down here, if I take the curve of it where it's convex, vex means that it's pushing out by the way, right? Convex. There's convex and concave. I used to have a hard time remembering the difference between these two. So again, if you think of cave, 
as cutting in, right? Concave would be pushing into the shape. Vex is pushing out, All right? So here we're pushing, whoops, here we're pushing out, right? If I keep that pushing out, that's my force side of this roundish structure. And then I straighten it. Now I can straighten it and do this where that's kind of in the middle and you'll see I kind of pinch at both ends. It's okay, but even better, even better, which is actually anatomically accurate is to try to go wide again at one end and narrower at the other, right? Our arm is thicker at the shoulder than it is at the wrist, you see? So now if I add a straight and I even concave it just a little bit, right? Just push in a little bit. I've got my curve of force here. I've got this bend here. And then, like I said, I can change the silhouette to, you know, some of what I did up here, you see? But this is a great shape, right? This is a great shape. And as um, Swanley and Rotunjay both showed, uh, you can do the same thing with legs as well, okay? So keep this all in mind. I hope that you enjoyed today's um, two tricks. Uh, trying to keep it simple, give you something that you can really grab um, and use like hopefully immediately. Uh, we're gonna be doing more of this over the next couple of months. So um, we will see you next Friday. Take care everyone. Thanks Mutunjay and finally, and I'll see everyone in a week. Bye-bye.